you all right so if you want to find out how i got into making rats into pencil cases with pencil sharp there's no sleight of the hand that's a real pencil sharpener up the rats arsehole then i'll tell you it's a long story though isn't it so fucking settle in I, initially right i wanted to show off to my girlfriend at the time i was at uni i'd gone home to my mum's and she'd come up all the way up to the northwest to come and visit me and we were a bit bored we were looking at weird shit on ebay and that and i thought oh, we saw some taxidermy on there and it was fucking awful like nothing like this day here like this day here that's that's done lovely that right? i didn't do it i just repaired it but Lovely job. Some of this stuff on eBay was shite meat. And people were asking a fucking fortune for like hundreds and hundreds of pounds on eBay for it. And I looked at her and I was like, well, I reckon I could do that. Because I wanted to show off to her, innit? Wanted to impress her. Wanted her to like me. Because I've always struggled to be able to tell, innit? If someone does like me or not, even though we've been together for a good few months. I did. I just find it difficult. So I thought, by if I chop up some animals in front of her and peel the skin off of them and make them into something that could make her laugh as well, and we could probably do it together, that's a nice night, innit? She'll, she'll remember that and she'll like me. Because you know, it was it was important to me, innit? So I fucking... Uh, we ended up talking to my mum about it later that day. And then the next day, my mum came back to her, to hers and we just hanging, we were hanging around in the garden, me and my missus. Who you can actually follow on here now with at odd and cute. If I remember, I'll edit it into the video so you can go and follow her i'll put it in the description fuck it she started making her own stuff recently but this isn't to advertise her this is how i got into making stuff out of dead rats in it and a fucking my mum came back with a paper bag with a couple of dead mice in frozen and went yeah you fucking weirdos do it so i did yeah uh, because i used to be a butcher in it i used to work in a butcher shop for as a saturday lad so i knew how to use a knife i was very confident with a knife very used to seeing the inside of animals which i think is something that shocks people and they they don't really realize what the inside of a creature looks like because even if you see a fox that's been fucked by a car it, it doesn't really look much like the inside of an animal in it because it's it's splattered it's flat it's not like a solid fucking cadaver kind of thing and gooey you know what i mean i think it freaks people out but it didn't freak me missus out in it we uh so we we skinned this mouse we were just messing about in the garden with me pet goose called grace and she was um kept coming to visit us in it while we were doing it because we was out quite late we had to light a candle in the end so that we could still see what we were doing and my missus didn't really want to be touching it after a bit really she decided that she didn't want to touch it but she'll watch do you know and she's still involved now she helps me come up with ideas and that brainstorming and stuff you know and um so we, I skinned this mouse and I stuffed it in that night and we it it worked. I enjoyed it in it. It was fun. We enjoyed our evening together, a little bit of a romantic date night kind of a thing, you know. And then a couple months down the line, I had a you. I found out that when I got back to uni in my what would have been I assume my third year, the start of the third year, we were supposed to have had a summer project at uni where we were supposed to have done something over you. I had no fucking idea. I didn't used to pay attention. I used to drink quite a lot. I'd be I'd be drunk in the daytimes and that just not caring. And uh, I didn't know. But luckily I'd I'd made this mouse and took pictures of it and that just because we thought we'd document it for a laugh. Just like, oh it was a nice night we spent together. Let's take a picture of me messing about with the skin of this dead mouse. And I showed them as a bit of a presentation like everyone else did. And it freaked a few people out in it in the class. Upset a few. Some found it funny. The teacher thought I was taking the piss. But then a couple months down the line, we had another project where we had to bring in something that we'd done in our past. And we had to, it was called a feasibility project. And we had to show off a transferable skill from our past, which I completely misinterpreted. I thought they meant like literally in our past. I have a habit of making mistakes like this, but. And then. So I thought, well, I used to be a butcher. I can skin stuff. I can I can peel apart animals. I'm good with a knife. I'll do taxidermy. That's a transferable skill. You use a knife to take all the skin off of an animal. If you you know if you're selling like a chicken breast or whatever, and the customer don't want the skin on, or chicken bits or lamb, or whatever. You can pigs. You know it's dead easy, isn't it, to peel the, the skin off of a dead pig? Cause it goes quite hard, and that. So I thought I could show that off, but by using doing taxidermy, because it's the same skill. People still want all of the meat off of the skin for taxidermy that you're just throwing the meat away rather than keeping the meat aren't you you're keeping the skin with all the meat off of it if that makes sense to you maybe it doesn't maybe you've never cut up a dead animal before maybe you haven't got a clue what it is i'm talking about there but i thought it made sense but it also had to be a feasible product that we thought people would want so the first thing i made was a wrap pencil case like this one and uh, the original one, I think, had a pink pencil sharpener, and you occasionally see it on memes as well. People still post pictures of it as memes. 
and it went viral overnight. I was very lucky. This must have been about seven years ago now, the year now being 2024, in case for some reason you're watching this in the future. And you could sharpen a pencil up its arse like this. There was a, a zipper on it. So you, you know, just, just the same as this one, not exactly the same. This one I tried to change it like last year, tried to make some differences so you can position the tail better, but it didn't work. So I went back to the old method of doing it. And, and I, you know, you can keep things in there. I also made this squirrel, which I gave a pair of fake tits and a summer dress to, because I thought that would be nice. You know, people might want that. It's a bit different. It's a one-off product kind of thing as well, rather than a batch producible product, because that was important to them. Anyway, the teachers thought I was taking the piss. I ended up in the local papers. The university got very annoyed at me because I was dragging their name through the mud or whatever by for, like, for about a week and a half, I want to say, maybe eight. Between eight and ten days, let's say, if you Googled the name of the university I went to on Google Images, within like three rows of pictures, a picture of my face, which was a much younger looking face than this, even of back then, because the newspapers had used an old picture of me from my Facebook. Next to... A rat's arsehole like that, edited together, which obviously the uni didn't like, so they got funny over it. Some of the tutors were quite very supportive over it. Some of them were lovely. Unfortunately, it was the ones really that didn't really teach me. The ones that taught me thought seemed to think I was a bellend. But like I said, I wasn't an ideal student. I was getting pissed all the time. Sometimes turning up to lessons drunk and stuff. You know, so it's not not ideal. I, I, I hadn't, you know, I'd, I'd burnt bridges way before this. I think, in my opinion, um, but then. It carried on. I carried on doing it after uni and that because I, I'd made myself a bit of a rod for my own back. It made it difficult to be able to get a job because when you go to get a job in a job interview and that, they say, oh, you know, what do you do? What have you done in the past? And we've Googled your name and we saw, you know, a picture of you and uh, a rabbit that you made into a toaster. Do you want to explain yourself? What's all that about? And they don't like it. Employers don't seem to like it. Even though I was going for sales jobs, they don't seem to like the idea that someone's got their own thing going. I mean, it could be that, or it could just be they don't want to sit in a room with a guy that cuts up animals for fun and does it in such a jovial and weird manner. So then I thought, fuck it, I've got to really knuckle down on this. So I got a proper studio, which is probably about the time I made the rabbit into a toaster, which is now available on stickers from my website and my TikTok shop. Um, loads of the stuff I'm showing you is available on my website. Now, even this shirt, mate, I ended up with a radio show as well over lockdown, which is what this is based on. This is the Loveland Frogman of Ohio. I ended up with a radio show because of off the back of the taxidermy and that, uh, and the books I've written. I've written books over the years. So it's really progressed. I'm, I'm, this has become a what is it I do, how did I get to write to this point. But there's my most recent book, 50 Ways to Torture the Sloth. Um, I've wrote a book about how you can fuck an antique table if you want to. Not like the ins and outs of like, but just how to sort of how to, how to woo an antique table. It's called How to Date an Antique Table, A Lover's Guide. Now I know that I'm speaking quite fast. And there's probably quite a lot of this you haven't took in. So watch it again, mate. Help me get my views up and get them fucking pennies rolling in. But give us a like and a follow, because uh, that'd be nice. I even, even after a few years, managed to convince me dad that because I'd started selling oddities, oddities like butterflies, like this. There's a butterfly there that I've framed up. You can find these on the website. That it'd be a good idea, because he's, he's pretty ill, isn't it? And he's not in good health at all. He hasn't been for most of my life. But he's got horrible feet. So I thought I'd take some pictures of his feet and put them on fridge magnets and that and sell them for a fiver apiece. And I sell these, I sell these on my website and I sell them at my antique stall in Dorset in Customs House Emporium. If you want to go there and see what I've got there, you'll see things I've repaired like the deer there and pheasants and chickens and things like that. Also, a few years ago, I started making bits like this, mate, which have got the hearts and eyeballs of things in. Now these, oh, fuck's sake, I've dropped the pencil down the back of the freezer. But these are these are like chick hearts and chick eyes. I make them, I try to use up as much as the animal as possible. And I'm hoping that this might have answered everybody's questions. I really wanted to keep this video under the three minute mark, but I'll just do my best to keep it under the ten minute mark. So more recently now, I make fornaments and that. So little fellas like this. So that's made out of a duckling's head. And her head's made out of rat ball sack. I also use the rat's ball sack as well to make this fella here, to give him a ball sack. All of the animals I use are predominantly sourced from pet shops in it, the frozen. And other stuff I get from old old stuff from taxidermists, other stuff I source from other taxidermists and antique markets and things like that. And I repurpose it and reuse it, but all of the rats and that I skin myself and taxidermy them myself. So hopefully this has answered most of the questions you could have. If not, feel free to leave a question in the comments. And I'll answer it, but you might already be able to find the answer in the playlist on my TikTok page that's titled Q&A 
Well, I'll, I'll fucking see you in a bit. Give us a follow, mate, if you watched it this far.